What's up, everybody? I'm Sega Lord X, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about, surprise, the Nintendo Switch. Now, I hadn't been on the eShop in quite some time, so I decided to hop on and check out what was going on for the machine. And boy, was I surprised at the sheer goodness of classic gaming that had come out for it. Shooters, Neo Geo releases, and compilations were really starting to show up for the machine. So I decided to pick up a few, decided to try out some different ways to play those games that are pretty specific to the Nintendo Switch, and boy did I have a good time. The Nintendo Switch is becoming one hell of a retro gaming device. We're going to go over some of the games that I have for the machine, and I'm going to talk about some of the ways that the Nintendo Switch actually enhances these games. Let's take a look. There is already a large and varied shoot 'em up catalog on the Nintendo Switch. Classics like Gunbird all look and play great on the system, sporting crystal clear graphics and great sound. These classic re-releases often have a number of additional display, difficulty, and sound options included, making them accessible for just about anyone. Not all of the classic releases on the machine are 2D either, with Polygon games like Zero Gunner 2 getting some love as well. These games are represented extremely well by the Switch's hardware, and run wonderfully. Even on a big screen TV, these games easily hold up today and play great. Perhaps the best part of this is the pricing structure of these classics. Most of them are usually only $8, a price that is essentially a fraction of what they go for in their retro gaming forms on systems like the Saturn and Dreamcast. Be sure to look for the other awesome shoot 'em ups like Soul Divide, Tenge, also known as Sengoku Blade. Dragon Blaze, Samurai Aces, and the Strikers 1945 series. The Neo Geo has seen awesome representation on the Switch almost from day one. The ACA Arcade Archive series by Hamster is a massive group of Neo Geo classics that have extremely solid emulation and are presented in their original arcade forms. These games represent everything from shoot 'em ups to sports to fighting games and even a host of awesome beat 'em ups. Neo Geo collecting has become prohibitively expensive for many of us, and these $8 classic arcade games are an absolute steal. Not only can you play them on the go, but they look great on the TV too. The Neo Geo no longer has to be an enigma to the masses with great releases like these. Even some classic Nintendo properties are getting in on the Switch bandwagon. Arcade versions of Mario Brothers and Super Mario Brothers are on the machine, and even the original arcade boxing classic Punch-Out! makes a showing. With Nintendo still mum on their virtual console plans, I found these releases to be extremely strange, but I am happy they are there. I haven't played the original arcade Punch-Out since I was a kid, and trying to drop Bald Bull again was truly a pleasure. One of the built-in organic advantages of these games on the Switch is the ability to rotate the screen to support Tate mode. This vertically oriented way of playing used to rely on special CRTs in the arcade, making home versions suffer on their 4-3 aspect ratios. On Switch, the game looks natural and plays as it always should have, giving purists and casuals alike the game as it was originally intended. Even games like Punch-Out! benefit from the Switch's vertical orientation, mimicking the dual display of the arcade original perfectly. Right. 
Not every classic on the machine is an untouched retro release. Games like Sunsoft's Blaster Master Zero here represent the original NES game in gameplay and design, but pretties things up with more color, parallax backgrounds, and better animation. A personal favorite of mine is Wonder Boy The Dragon's Trap, a classic Sega joint that has been given a bright new coat of paint to bring it screaming into the modern age. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Just take a moment and soak up the magnificent presentation of this game. Aside from the game's facelift, the gameplay remains as good as it ever was. Traverse the land and find keys, weapons, armor, and many other power-ups along the way. If the new visuals don't do it for you, simply jump into the options and make the game look and sound like the original. This one is a must-own on the go. There are also a bunch of games on the Switch that draw incredible inspiration from the classics of years past. In the absence of F-Zero and Wipeout, you have a game like Fast RMX, a hovercraft racer with flashy visuals and breakneck speeds. It pays homage to the futuristic racers we all wish had modern equivalents, adding a few new additions to keep the formula fresh. The game is gorgeous in motion even on the big screen, and the tracks are just long enough to make for perfect portable play. There are also a bunch of compilations in the works for the machine. Sega is preparing a Sega Ages line for the Nintendo Switch, with games like Thunder Force 4, Game Ground, and Fantasy Star already announced. There are also promises to be extras for these releases, sweetening the deal. Speaking of Sega, they have finally got off their ass and got a physical release of Sonic Mania in the pipeline. Titled Sonic Mania Plus, this one has extras like an art book, a reversible Sega Genesis throwback cover, and extra modes added to the actual game. Capcom is getting in on the compilation bandwagon and releasing Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. This one has all the mainline Street Fighter games in it, including the Alpha games all in one package. Capcom is also getting ready to drop Mega Man X, Legacy Collection 1 and 2, containing Mega Man X 1 through 8. SNK has decided that the Neo Geo isn't the only place to play their wares, and we are getting SNK 40th Anniversary Collection at the end of the year, containing over a dozen classics like Ikari Warriors and Guerrilla War, the Switch's Tate support should come in handy with this one. So there we go guys, the Nintendo Switch, and boy is it becoming a hell of a retro gaming device. Now it is perfectly true that many of these games can be found on the PlayStation 4, the PC, and the Xbox One. But the portable nature of the Nintendo Switch adds so much playability to some of these games. Games that you may not normally sit down to play for long periods of time on a television can be taken with you anywhere. A game of Neo Turf Masters on the go? Man, there's nothing better. And another thing is, is that the Nintendo Switch, because of its size and the ability to just organically throw it right into a vertical Tate mode, really truly enhances some of these shoot 'em ups. I mean, I was blown away by how well games like Gunbird played on the thing. Not only did they look great, but the Tate mode actually allowed the graphics to go into a bigger screen because of the vertical orientation. It really did enhance that game, and you could play it anywhere you want it to. The Nintendo Switch, like I said, even without a virtual console, has just turned out to be an incredible device for these classic games. 
I can't even imagine what's going to happen once Nintendo does get its ass in gear and we do finally get that virtual console. The Nintendo Switch promises to be a gaming device that you simply cannot live without. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you next time.